Hello, this is Alex Howard. Welcome back to OSCON 2011. Our next guest is Joseph Smarr, a software engineer at Google and a part of the Google Plus team. Thank you for joining me here, Joseph. Sure. Always fun to be at OSCON. Uh, well, it's great to have you here. I know you'll be doing a session later talking more about the social web. Um, you've had some previous experience before Google. You were the CTO at Plaxo. Right. Um, what are some of the lessons from that experience that you applied to building Google Plus? Well, it's a, my time at Plaxo helped inform a lot. I mean, the first thing is just that the, the need to be able to connect and share and stay in touch with people is not only so universal, but so unmet even by all the explosion of social technology we've had over the last few years. It seems like you know, people are still on multiple services, different services, different phones, and really just being able to sh connect to the people you care about and share what you want. Like, there's still a lot of room for innovation. And so, and in particular, one of the things we did towards the end of Plaxo was this Plaxo Pulse, which is one of the first of these sort of web-wide aggregators that let you connect separately to family and friends and business. And while it didn't get a ton of usage overall, the, those of us that were using it really found this kind of magic moment of being able to share both publicly and privately at the same time, and that you would share a lot more stuff if you could have a, just a bit more control over who saw it, and if that was really built into the product and not just sort of a secondary afterthought feature. And so that, for me, at least personally, helped me really have the uh, courage to tackle something like circles and really try to say, let's build in that level of control and granularity from day one, even though it is obviously a bit more complicated than having everyone be one giant list of friends or followers. And so far, it seems to have worked out really well. Yeah, the, the circles concept is something that's really interesting. The um, user interface, uh, I think people have responded well to so yeah. far. Uh, but the response has been interesting, right? You've hit 20 million users faster than uh, any social network previously from what we can see. Um, have you experienced any scaling issues? And if so, um, how have you addressed them? And uh, will we ever see an equivalent of a fail whale on uh, Google Plus? I certainly hope not. Um, you know, scalability comes in a few different flavors. Um, so in terms of the core, like, do we have enough machines and are the response times fast enough? I mean, luckily Google's been at this for a while and we have a lot of really talented uh, infrastructure engineers and a lot of existing infrastructure, so that part has gone pretty well. I'm sure there are a few people scurrying behind the scenes, but, but nothing too scary. Um, but scaling also happens in terms of how the interface works. So if you're a lot of people, especially those in the media or more than text, I've found, you know, I have over 20,000 people have added me to a circle or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so the scalability of the UI in terms of how do I page through all that and how do I actually find the people to add back or when I make a post, I sometimes get hundreds of comments. How do I actually see the comments from people I know and care about or how do I parse the overall sense? I think that's an area where we certainly have a lot more work to do because we just didn't expect to be this big, this fast, in particular with this sort of, these people who are attracting these huge followings. And that's something that the product wasn't really designed to make awesome. Um, and it, it works, but it's, it's not awesome. And I hope we can make it more awesome. <laughs> So uh, awesome experience, fine thing. Uh, <laughs> now the the kind of overall question is, what have you learned from how people are using it? Because I know I'm uh, talking to Rick Clow uh, uh -huh. last week in, in DC. Um, he you know, mentioned that for, first of all, they were surprised to see their response, and second of all, the uh, design of it wasn't necessarily designed uh, for certain things, specifically brands. We you know mm -hmm. we've seen a lot of the furor in the past yeah. week over that. Um, what other unexpected use cases have surprised you? You know, I think what surprised me the most is how much of this sort of high engagement public conversation stuff is happening in, in tandem with the private sharing. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we really thought there's lots of places you can share publicly today, but you can't really share with enough control a lot of the time. And so that was where we really wanted to nail. But we thought the public use case was also important because it seems weird that I should have to use a different tool just because I want to say something publicly versus privately. And so mm -hmm. we wanted to get that together. And, you know, but when we were dog footing it inside, the company that is using an early version just with employees, you know, it, it was sort of a similar experience to Google Buzz. People would post stuff, people would share stuff, but it didn't feel that different. But I think externally, it's felt very different. Um, there, because it's public and you can really get all of these followers very quickly, um, people are having these, and because the comment system is all real time, people get these incredibly high engagement discussions. Um, sort of like, I think, what some people experienced on FriendFeed in the early days, but that, you know, now there isn't really a place to do that, where it's longer form content, it's not just tweets, but it's got this sort of you know, vibrancy that uh, I don't think people are seeing elsewhere. And, and so that, that was surprising. I really didn't expect that. And it's been really cool to see. And it happened from day one. And I think the other thing that's exciting about that is it hasn't, as far as I can tell, it hasn't cannibalized um, the private sharing. So you see people doing lots of private sharing and this public stuff, and it, it does seem to coexist naturally. And that sometimes becomes, that's an emotional thing more than a technology thing. You know, it doesn't feel like the right space for that kind of a conversation. And so, so far it seems to be working and that makes me really happy. Now, when you think about, uh, this is a social network that's made up of people. Um, how do you uh, think through creating feedback loops that uh, encourage people to not only connect to one another, but um, using the technology itself mm -hmm. uh, to 
uh, Im improve how they're communicating, which is to say, how can you instantiate code in a way that replicates people's relationships offline? Um, and also, as you say, it protects their privacy or their wish to um, really engage with large numbers of people. Yeah, we, I mean, the, the way we think about it is, while you're using the product, it should be teaching you how to use it better. And so we have a lot of little teachable moments sprinkled throughout the product. And we also try to make it transparent what other people are doing. So for example, if I see a post from you, I can see whether it was shared publicly or to a limited audience, and I can click and see who you shared it to. And that may teach me, like, oh, I could be sharing some private stuff as well as some public stuff as well. right? Or similarly, you know, the, the circles get used in lots of different places. So when you want to share a post, you know, there's a little pull down. You can choose which circles you want to share it to. But if you want to go to your profile and say, who can see my phone number, it's that same interface with the pull down and circles and stuff. And so the idea is you just sort of learn those gestures. And then you, you realize, like, oh, I could apply this in lots of different places. Maybe I could actually share more on my profile because I don't have to share it to everybody, mm -hmm. right? And things like that. Um, and then, you know, for example, when you go add somebody to a circle, there's an option to create a new circle right there. And so people may start with just the default set of circles. And it may take them a while to realize, you know, actually, I want to have friends and close friends, or I want to have family and extended family or something. And so you don't have to get all that nuance right away, but it's sort of there when you're ready for it. Um, another example that has worked out really well, I think, is um, we wanted to make sure that you could start sharing on Google Plus before all your friends were here, because you know these things take a while to grow. And so we have this feature where you can add people to your circles just with a name and email address if they don't use the product. Mm -hmm. And then when you share stuff, they get an email. But we really wanted to make it clear to people this was going on, so they only did it when they wanted to. And so the first time you try to share something to a circle that has people who don't use the service, you get a little checkbox under the message that says, hey, five of these people are on Google Plus, and they'll get an email. And the first time you try to share, if you haven't changed the setting, we even pull down a little thing and really make sure, hey, you know, Joseph and Mark and these guys aren't on the service. They're going to get an email. Just want to make sure you understand and you're mm -hmm. cool with that. Mm -hmm. But what we see is, as a result, people use these features a lot more because they're not Maybe they weren't aware of them, or once they get it, then they understand why they wanted to use it and they use it more. And so I think that you know, there's more to do of that, but I think that style of sort of helping you get better as you use the products. I mean, you know, video games that are, do a lot of this sort of thing, but it's not really something you see a lot in consumer products, and so I think it's exciting to work on. So one of the things that I uh, think about with uh, this particular product is, is that um, as opposed to just sitting on its own, uh, because of Google's reach online, you can think about it as what my colleague Ed Dumbill has described as the, a social backbone. Mm -hmm. right? And one of the uh, ways to think through that might be uh, an API for it down the road. Um, how close are you to a Google API, or Google Plus API, and how do you envisage it being used in the future? What standards are you building to? I think, you know, I don't have a great answer for you right now, honestly. It's, it's one of the things we're spending a lot of time thinking about because, um, on the one hand, clearly uh, the goal is to not just have another social network, but to really help make not only all of Google's products, but the web in general more social, more open, more connected. And APIs are a crucial piece of that. Mm -hmm. And we, we actually got a far way down the road with the Buzz APIs, um, and, and not only having a lot of access to the activities and the graph and so forth, but with a lot of these modern open standards like PubSub Hubbub and WebFinger and, and so forth. And so that, that's the style of thing we'd like to bring. But I think the devil's in the details because as people have seen in lots of social networks, um, you know, when you release your platform and what channels you open up and what you create can really affect the tone of the network overall, right? The content. And one of the things people seem to really like about Google Plus right now is it's kind of 100% authentic. Every piece of content there was created by a real person sitting in front of Google Plus and deciding who to share with. And so balancing the obvious need to get more content in and out from more sources while maintaining that authenticity is something that um, we're, we're spending a lot of time playing and iterating and coming up with. So I think you'll see things kind of trickle out over time as we get bits and pieces we're happy with. Like you use the plus one button, in fact, even made it out before the Google Plus launch, and it'll continue to improve, and there'll be other things like that that kind of come out. And so, but it's it's something we're trying to take a cautious and thoughtful approach to because we really want to get it right and not, um, you know, cause negative side effects. Sure, uh, I mean it. it it makes sense in that context. Uh, one of the, the challenges that I've, I'm hearing from people in the larger web community is this issue of identity. right? Mm -hmm. and, and identity online is one of the most difficult things that we're all thinking through. Yeah. Uh, so our privacy, security, the kind of, right, those right, are the right. core issues. And Google knows that very well, um, certainly uh, given what the search engine does. right? Um, so in that context, uh, what's your take on, on this issue of using pseudonyms versus real identity? right? I, yeah. I understand what you're saying about entities um, you know, not not being on there as themselves. Mm -hmm. At the same time, I think there, there have been cases made over the years um, for people being able to share things online without having being tied to their real selves. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, this is a bit of a complex issue, and I won't probably do it full justice. A lot of people have written more eloquently than me about it. But I'll just say, you know, when the way we think about it is, A, 
there's cases where that authenticity and knowing that this is a real person and with whatever name they tend to be called in the real world is really a feature. It, it changes the tone of discussions, it helps you find people you know in the real world. And so wanting to make sure that there's a space that that is um, preserved and promoted I think is really important. Any, any of these social networks, it's, it's not enough to write the code, you have to make the right community, right? Hmm. And lots of different networks choose different approaches to how they do that and they all have different consequences. And it's not that one is inherently better or more valid than the others, it's just that you know, if you don't do anything about it, it will kind of take its own course, right? Um, that being said, obviously there are a lot of cases where being able to share things not under your real identity is valuable and necessary, right? And Google has a lot of products like this today, like YouTube, right? If you're, if you're posting, uh, you know, videos of authoritarian governments during a revolution, mm -hmm. you may not want to use your real name, and that seems pretty valid. Um, whether or not that type of use case will be supported in the Google Plus as you know it today or when is something, again, we're all sort of thinking through and trying to figure it out. But it's not meant to stop you from doing that in other products where that would make a good thing to do. Uh, and the other thing I'll say about that, and in this case I think makes it clear, is that it's, it's not just enough to offer the ability to post under a, a pseudonymous identifier. If you're going to make the commitment that we're not going to out your real identity, that actually takes a lot of work, right? Uh, especially if you're using your real account to log in and then posting under a pseudonym. And so we feel a real responsibility that if we're going to make the claim to people, it's safe, you're not going to get outed, that we really think through the architecture end to end and really make sure that there aren't any loopholes or gotchas where all of a sudden you get outed. And that's actually a hard thing to do in software. And so I think that's something an angle people often miss is that we just we don't want to do it wrong. If, and so we'd rather wait until we can get it right. Well, you've got some engineering talent there. We'll see what you come up with. <laughs> right, exactly. Okay.